Greetings, I'm Mitch Densley from the Palo Alto Network's Education Delivery Department, and I'm here to talk to you today about the functions and concepts of wildfire. The big feature with wildfire is to turn unknown malware into known malware. The reason this is important is because zero day or unknown malware is so new that most network security and endpoint security products are incapable of detecting and blocking the propagation of this unknown malware. The scenario is simple. A user downloads a file he thinks is benign, but turns out is malicious, and then that file is able to spread throughout the network without any impedance. When we introduce a Palo Alto Network's next generation firewall into the environment, when the user attempts to download that same file, the firewall can take a copy of that file. In order to appropriately see this file, you might need to deploy SSL decryption in order to open up tunnels and see the contents inside. Then, based on the configuration of a wildfire analysis profile, that file can be sent up to the wildfire public cloud for analysis. There are multiple forms of analysis that can occur. First, static analysis involves looking for particular bit patterns that might be indicative of malware. Then, dynamic analysis is actually running the file and observing its attack behavior against the host. Some malware is particularly evasive for sandboxing, and so we can flag that malware for analysis on a bare metal system. After the analysis is complete and the malware has attacked the sandbox system, this file is now considered known malware. Now that it is known malware, we can generate antivirus signatures to block the propagation of this file. After the signatures have been created, they're handed over to the Palo Alto Network's update server at a five minute interval, after which time a firewall with an active wildfire subscription can download these signatures and then use them to block the spread of this file to other hosts within the network. To recap, wildfire turns unknown malware into known malware. The execution or prevention of the spread of malware is not done by the wildfire analysis profile, it is implemented using the antivirus profile. The wildfire analysis profile turns the unknown malware to known malware. The antivirus security profile would then block the spread of that malware based on antivirus signatures and wildfire signatures. One thing to keep in mind, however, in this scenario, wildfire did not interrupt the initial user from downloading the file, and thus the initial user became infected. However, Wildfire can inform the firewall administrator that that user who downloaded the file did receive a malicious file. That way, administrators can follow up and clean the infection on the endpoint after the fact. Wildfire isn't just capable of detecting malicious files, it can be used to detect malicious links and URLs also. In this scenario, we have an attacker who sends an email to a target user, and that email contains a link which looks benign However, the firewall takes a copy of that link and based on the wildfire analysis profile will send that link up to the wildfire public cloud where then a virtual machine doing dynamic analysis will browse to the address in that link based on the behavior of the site browse to. If it sends malicious payload back to the sandbox, then this link is considered malicious. Wildfire will then send the URL from the link over to the PanDB cloud servers such that when the target victim user clicks on the link in the email and attempts to browse to the attacker's servers, the firewall can query PandyB Cloud to look up the categorization of that URL. If PandyB says that that URL is malicious, then the user's browser session can be blocked using a URL filtering profile. So to recap, a wildfire analysis security profile can also detect malicious links. The URL filtering security profile can prevent a user from browsing to or accessing that malicious URL. And depending on the timing, it could even block the initial target user from trying to go to that malicious site. Let's look at the high level functionality of wildfire, shall we? First, the firewall receives a file. Then the firewall checks to see if the file has been signed by a trusted digital signature. If it has, then the file would be allowed. If it has not, then the firewall will take a hash of the file. Then it will check against wildfire to see if that hash has been seen before. If that hash has been seen before, then there will be a verdict associated. Benign, grayware, 
and greyware is not technically malicious, but it's not great either. Then there's phishing or malware verdicts. However, if Wildfire has not seen this file before, then the firewall will check to see if the file size is smaller than the configured maximum thresholds. If the file is too large, then the firewall has no option but to allow the file. However, if the file is not too large, then it can be submitted up to Wildfire for analysis. Once the analysis is complete, a verdict will be generated based on the characteristics and behavior of the file, and that verdict would be again benign, grayware, phishing, or malware. After that, then Wildfire will inform the submitting firewall of this verdict, and this will appear within the Wildfire submissions log. After which, Wildfire will generate malware signatures and make them available for firewalls to download. If your firewall has a valid Wildfire subscription, it can immediately download the signature once it's placed on the update server, after about a five minute period. If your firewall does not have a Wildfire subscription, you still benefit from the submission of this file during the next day's antivirus update. Now, not all administrators would be comfortable sending every type of file into a public cloud environment. For this reason, we make available the WF500, which we call a private cloud analysis system. The private cloud analysis system can detect malicious files and malicious links and generate signatures to block their propagation. The signatures are made available for the firewall to pull on an every five minute basis. Also, the WF500 has an XML API, which you can programmatically interact with to do a lot of the same functionality. Now, depending on the situation, you might want to employ the use of both the public cloud and a private cloud analysis system. We call this a hybrid cloud scenario, where the administrator configure files of a sensitive nature to be sent to a WF500 for analysis and files with no sensitivity to be sent up to the public cloud for analysis. Note that not all file types can be analyzed on a WF500, but all file types can be analyzed within the Wildfire public cloud. Let's look at the configuration of these settings. So on the Device tab, Setup, Wildfire tab, you can come into the General Settings, click on the gear, and this is where you can add your WF500 address. It could be its hostname or IP. Also, this is where you can see the different file types supported, as well as the place where you can configure their file size limitations. In a moment, I'll show you the range of options available, but at the moment you can see the default values. Also, if you wish the Wildfire Submissions log to contain information about files detected as benign, or files detected as grayware, check these two boxes and click OK. Also, if you scroll down, you can see the Session Information Settings window where you can turn on or off different data elements that will appear about sessions within the Wildfire Submissions log. Now speaking about the file types, the first one I want to introduce to you is a PE, or Portable Executable. A Portable Executable is a name that encompasses multiple file types, for example EXEs, specific types of object code, DLLs, or Dynamic Link Libraries, as well as font files. With no Wildfire subscription license, Every Palo Alto Networks firewall is able to submit PEs up for analysis, and any PE submitted that is malicious could be blocked using the antivirus signatures downloaded the next day. If you do have a Wildfire subscription license, however, you have the ability to submit all of the remaining file types, APKs, archive file types, emails, flash jar, Linux file types, Mac OS, Office documents, as well as PDFs. Note, not all file types can be analyzed and have signatures created on a WF500 private cloud. So pick carefully which file types you would send to the private cloud versus the public cloud. Also, you can see in the bottom right, on a per file type basis, what the maximum range value option is, as well as the default. The configuration of a Wildfire Analysis Security Profile is fairly straightforward. I liken the Wildfire Analysis Security Profile to a vacuum. You tell it what things you want to suck up and where you want them to be analyzed, and then after analysis, a verdict would be passed back down. If you want to block files that have been determined to be malicious, you would do so using an antivirus security profile. Notice within the antivirus security profile, there are two columns for action. First, the action column in the middle references the daily 
or 24-hour downloaded antivirus database, whereas the wildfire action references the wildfire database, which will be made available via the update server every five minutes, and your firewall can be configured to download this database on as little as a one-minute interval. Now for malicious links, we would use the URL filtering security profile. You have three categories, command and control, malware, and phishing, which are directly related to the wildfire analysis of URLs. You can set their access to block if you wish. You can also create custom URL categories and import lists of other known malicious URLs that maybe wildfire hasn't analyzed. To see the full list of URL categories supported by Palo Alto Networks, I direct you to the URL at the bottom of the screen. In order to make full use of wildfire, it does require a subscription license. The license allows you to submit all supported file types via your firewall or via the Wildfire API. Also, it allows you to download and install Wildfire virus signatures. To do this best, you would configure your firewall to check with the update server every minute for new Wildfire signatures. They will be provided from the Wildfire server to the update server on a five minute interval. Finally, we cannot guarantee that you will receive a verdict or a signature within the first five minute interval after submitting your file. This really depends on several factors like sandbox evasiveness, but you might. I hope you found this video informative. Thank you for watching.